Hi there, my name is Eric and this is a presentation on depth of field. What is depth of field? Depth of field refers to the amount of focus in a scene. Distances are measured from the focal plane or the position of the sensor to the real world item being photographed. Usually depth of field is measured perpendicularly at right angles, both horizontally and vertically from the camera outwards. This can be changed by using tilt lenses, also called PC lenses, or by angling the lens manually. Depth of field is affected by three main factors, including aperture, focal length, and point of focus. Other factors that affect depth of field include the size of the digital sensor, the amount of magnification or cropping, distance of the viewer from the displayed image, aperture and depth of field. What is an aperture? An aperture is a hole analogous to the pupil of your eye. It's, it's in the lens of the camera. Uh, it can open up, let more light in, or close down, let less light in, in much the same way as your eye works. The metal ring which creates the aperture is called the diaphragm. This is analogous to the iris. Most diaphragms are made of five to nine thin metal blades that slide past each other. Aperture size is measured in F numbers. Uh, range of aperture value. So any lens is going to have uh, a range. They'll always have a minimum and they'll always have a maximum. A lens is often described by its focal length in millimeters uh, and its minimum aperture. So you've got both things. Zoom lenses have uh, a minimum aperture which, which is dependent upon the active focal length. Minimum aperture is then stated as a range. So for example f3.5 to 5.6. Apertures are controlled either through the aperture ring on older lenses or through a dialer button on newer cameras. Here we have two pictures, uh, one shot at f1.4, one shot at f16. You can see how a wide open aperture, low f number, produces very little depth of field, whereas a small aperture, f16, uh, gives you a large depth of field. Take a look at the following slides. Pay attention to how the background comes into focus. Uh, there's this re reversed relationship between aperture and F number. So a large F number means a small aperture size, which gives you more depth of field. And a small F number gives you larger aper size, aperture sizes, which gives you less depth of field. Uh, what you don't see are other exposure settings, such as shutter speed and ISO value. We'll talk about those on a different show. So here's a shot at F2.8 f4, f8, f11. Um, you can see how things come into focus more. I like to use large apertures in portraits. They mean using small f numbers. Photographs of people will benefit with wide open apertures. Also using a mild telephoto lens in conjunction with a low f number produces a really nice out of focus background. The out of focus background helps to draw your eye towards the subject and reduces the number of distracting elements in a photo. Here are some other examples. Small apertures in landscapes. When I'm out taking pictures of landscapes, I like to use small apertures. I get better depth of field that way. Okay. Uh, for example, here is a shot and another. All is shot with very small apertures, giving me lots of depth of field. Focal length and depth of field. What is focal length? It relates to the millimeter value of the lens. We're going to be talking about relative focal length. So when we talk about a relative focal length, it's relative to a full frame digital uh, sensor or a 35 millimeter film camera. A wide angle lens is less than 50 millimeters. So 20, 24, 28, 35 are all examples. An ultra wide is usually considered 20 millimeters or less. Eight millimeters is a fisheye. A normal lens is 50 millimeters. It gives you a normal perspective. We talk about that more in another show. A telephoto lens is greater than 50 millimeters. So 85, 105, 150, 200, 300 are all examples. A super telephoto is generally over 400 millimeters. Okay, so all the focal lengths I give you are relative ones, not actual ones. So a wide angle lens versus a telephoto lens. Uh, the wide angles give you more depth of field at any given focal length than a telephoto lens does. This is an ultra-wide, tremendous depth of field. 
Uh, Ultra-wide-angle lens do, however, pr produce different kinds of distortion. You get perspective changes where things in the foreground are much larger than things in the background, and you get barrel distortion where uh, things are on the edges of the film uh, of the negative of the sensor tend to be somewhat physically distorted. Uh, mild wide-angle focal lengths are common on kit lenses. Those would be like your 28, which is equivalent to an 18 millimeter on a APS-C sensor. Uh, common values are 24 to 35. Uh, mild wide-angle lenses are still produce pretty good depth of field, especially at smaller apertures. Normal lenses are lenses around 50 millimeter full frame. That would be equivalent of about a 35 on a APS-C. A uh, normal lens of 50 millimeters produces normal perspective. It's kind of the way the eye sees it. As part of a kit lens, a 50 millimeter, or again 35 on an APS-C, uh, allows foregrounds and backgrounds to be seen without perspective distortion. So it looks the way it does to your eye. A prime 50 millimeter usually has very low minimum apertures, which allows fast shutter speeds and produces low depth of field. This is an example, and there's more. These are all examples of normal lenses uh, at wide open apertures giving you that really nice out of focus background. As focal lengths increase past the normal, depth of field becomes increasingly scant, so less and less and less. You can see here that as the focal length gets longer, I get narrower field of view, but I also get less depth of field at any given aperture. Here's an 85 millimeter focal length, 5.6. This is a 123 millimeter uh, focal length at f5.6 as well, and this is a 300 millimeter. Here are some of the shots: shot with a 400 and a 600 and a 900 millimeter. Depth of field becomes progressively shorter and shorter. Point of focus is where uh, you focus in your image. Um, Point of focus is the distance from the camera sensor or film plane to where the camera's lens locks focus. Typically the focus point is on one subject. The plane of focus is parallel to the film plane. If focal length and aperture are fixed at any given value, the depth of field will vary with where the point of focus is. So in other words, uh, if you have a focal length of 50 millimeters and an aperture 5.6, the closer you get to the camera, uh, the less depth of field there is. So greater distance gives you more depth of field. These are all examples of changing focal length. So uh, the butterfly is very close, very little depth of field. The night heron is a modest distance away, more depth of field. And then we have the uh, shot of the kayaks, quite a lot of depth of field because the focal point is, is farther away. Uh, this little table is something you can explore on your own. But basically, it talks about how uh, aperture, focal length, and point of focus all go towards affecting depth of field. Here we have a uh, caddisfly larva shot with a 105 millimeter at f25, uh, with a very narrow point of focus, seven, about seven centimeters away. So not a lot of depth of field, but I don't need a lot in this particular situation. Here we want everything in focus, so I've got a 20 millimeter lens with an aperture of f13 and my point of focus is around 10 meters away. Same sort of idea in these things. I'm just going to talk about hyperfocal focusing very quickly. Basically all hyperfocal focusing is is uh, you need to do a couple of things. All right, You need to think about aperture, you need to think about focal length, and you need to think about point of focus. We want to get as much in focus in a scene as possible. And I'm talking about everything from one to two feet away to infinity. You have to follow these instructions. Um, on any lens that you've got, preferably a uh, wide angle or an ultra wide, select the smallest aperture you can. Uh, the second thing you want to do is you want to make sure that your wide angle or ultra wide is, is uh, opened, is up, is at the very, very minimum focal length. So if you've got a, uh, an 18 to 55, 18. If you've got an 11 to 20, you know, 11. Wider is better. Pick a point of focus somewhere between 10 and 20 feet away from you. Take the picture 
now what you want to do is press play, zoom in, and check to make sure all the points are in focus. Uh, if you need to, change where the focal point is so further or closer and redo it and check again. Thanks for watching. Uh, please take a look at my website uh, or send me an email. I have lots more postings that I either have or will have shortly. Thanks again. Bye.